Kirsten, it's great to see you. Um, tell us how your pan-European network uh, is progressing. Perfectly. It we is. are right on track. Um, we kicked it off last year. We set up the company. I'm now the managing director. And last year we started with Cloud VPN, right. proving that we have one product, commercial product, simultaneously in three countries. Now we are full speed building the full infrastructure. Two backend data centers being established this year, yeah. which then will enable us in a secure way all future services which Deutsche Telekom will come up uh, from the third quarter this year will all be produced on this new platform. So which countries? Croatia, Slovakia and, and uh, Hungary? Hungary, but this was for those for the cloud VPN. Yeah. But in general we talk about certain countries in Europe, the whole footprint we have, yeah. which we will connect, we will build one infrastructure, we will migrate uh, no actually we be, we we are building on a greenfield way, yeah. 50 new platforms in parallel, which will enable us to shut down 650 platforms in That's the next years. So it's a huge uh, mission. It's yeah. actually the killer application for the telco industry. Is it? Because yes. we were talking about that before. So, uh, but I mean that. So, it, and, and within the network itself, if you are shutting down uh, some of the applications uh, and replacing them with with less, obviously you're saving money on how much it costs to operate the network. Is it also uh, going to be a profitable network in terms of generating new revenues? Well, first on the cost side, you know, since revenues are going down, cost is an immense factor we, we are being driven. So at the end, when we have done this, our cost base is like half of the one which we have at the moment. Let me give you in, in the That's first... That's an amazing number as well, isn't it? Well, you know, compared to the, ex the investments in access, it's still less, yeah. but still 50% in all core and service applications, it's a big number. Yeah. yeah? So let me give this uh, as an example. The first real product and it may sound very funny for you because we talk about messaging mm. and everybody thinks it's a dead service but still it is a good test balloon for us because we have 30 platforms in our 13 countries from seven vendors mm. we now build it once we have it up and running we have by today 1.8 million customers on it mm -hmm. we know that we saved 2 million euro last year and uh, we will reduce uh, the headcount by 70% on mm. the OPEX by 80% just by doing this consolidation across Europe. That's extraordinary. And this isn't is just it? a small, you know, it's always good to start small yeah. than to do with yeah. large uh, platforms because it always touches end user. Yeah. and uh, involves customers. But I mean, I think obviously the reason you started small was almost in an experimental way, but you're beyond the experiment now. It seems like now the network is more mass production if you're entering all of these other countries. I wouldn't say so, because no. uh, last year it was about proving to have a product for the customer. Now what we are now proving is that we will have one infrastructure mm -hmm. yeah, across Europe, out of three backend data centers yeah. where we will get over the time all service platforms on top of it. And you wouldn't want to start a large like we did with the IP transformation right. in Macedonia. You know, everybody was smiling, yeah. but at the end, uh, it's better to start and get tested in a small country, the same like with messaging, yeah. that you can see you touch customers at the end, yeah, and you don't want that you lose revenues that make customers unsatisfied. So that's why it's better to test everything yeah. on a small scale and then expand. What have you learned along the way in deploying this network? Well, a lot of things. You know, the biggest thing is people, 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 and cross-functional approach. What do you mean by cross-functional? Well, if you if you have a service platform, any service platform, and you have live customers on it, yeah. it means when you want to uh, to move those customers from one platform to the other, you don't want that the customer feels it. Yeah, because once he feels it, like in the IP transformation, then you know he starts questioning. You would lose revenues. So you need to take the whole organization with you, starting from the CEO, yeah. that he understands that this is necessary to do. Yeah. And then you need the commercials because you need to agree how to approach the customers. You need to finance people in order to uh, assess the risk. You need regulatory people because you do it cross-border because the, the regulation and data privacy plays a big role. You yeah. involve everybody. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And so we have now, the project consists of 600 people out of 13 countries, cross-functional, cross-national, 
and I think that will be the success factor. That's fantastic. I mean, it sounds like it's been an amazingly uh, exciting program to work on, and it has moved incredibly quickly, hasn't it? You must be quite proud of that. I am. I'm, I'm really proud. Yeah. Um, the mission took off. I think we are further than everybody else thought. Yeah. That's what we are getting played back from the industry, from the, the vendors. They are surprised of the speed, yeah. but you know, we cannot wait. Um, the pressure is increasing, Google's, Apple's, everybody out there. Yeah. So for us, uh, it is the only chance. We have come up with all synergies in the countries, or most of the synergies. Now the next step is to prove cross-country yeah. synergies. Yeah. And that's nobody has done. Yeah. Everybody's looking now at us, so full speed ahead. Huh? What do you think about the state of virtualization technology at the moment, in particular NFV? I mean, is there uh, is the is the industry as a whole, particularly on the vendor side, moving quickly enough uh, to address things like security, interoperability? Uh, are you about where you expected us to be at this point in 2016? Well, it's an incredible journey together. Um, you know that. Uh, we, as Deutsche Telekom, are one of the front runners in SDN, NFV, and TerraStream, which we piloted in, uh, in Croatia, which is the basis of everything what we do. But all you know, what I'm doing at the moment in terms of building this pan-European network is fully built on a target architecture on cloudification and virtualization. And only if we are able, together with the suppliers, to find the solutions, only if we have virtual EPCs. If we have everything virtualized, we will be able to, to come to this vision what I just described. Yeah? So this is the precondition. And we can only do this because the uh, industry is ready to come up with virtualized solutions, but not everything is there. So we are doing it together and we need to drive it. And I think one of the important things is standardization, which we still absolutely. have to work on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, one of your competitors, I'm not going to say who it is, uh, you know, had a really bad misstep recently because uh, they tried to deploy uh, an NFV network with uh, virtual network functions uh, using, you know, an ecosystem of products which they assumed would work because it was all based on open source specifications, and it really didn't work. So, you know, a response that I've heard from some service providers is, "Hey, we only really want to buy pre-configured uh, NFV solutions, either from one vendor or from a very specific." ecosystem where they're going to certify uh, that the NFVI and the VNFs are going to be interoperable um, so that we don't have to do all of that integration ourselves. Is that how Deutsche Telekom looks at things or are you still prepared to do a certain level of inter systems integration yourselves? I know one, one uh, operator who went with one supplier and actually stepped back uh, because he realized that it is not really open source, yeah? right. what he expected. Um, because you, he realized that he would be locked in again in the old way that it was before. Very 20th century. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we are going the, the way of being, we want to do, the industry will be changing. Mm. Yeah? There will be more to be done on the operator. If you want to decouple hardware and software, if you want to go virtualized, if you want to go open source without the standardization, some tasks have to be done by the operator. You can also do it with partners, but in order to uh, to really know that you are independent, mm. I think some parts will be done by us. Yeah. yeah. So we want to do it that we buy hardware. We have uh, now selected uh, suppliers. We also selected the suppliers for open cloud. We will do the integration by ourselves. Yeah. We also selected uh, uh, an integrator who will help us at the beginning. Yeah. But at the end, in order to be sure that it will work, I believe you have to have your hands on it. You have to have your hands on it and you need to drive it. That yeah. also means we need to have new skills in the company. Yeah? And that comes back to people. That comes back to people. It's all yeah. about people. <laughs> Let me ask you a, a more personal question, if you will. I mean, you're a very senior executive at one of the most important communications companies in the world. Uh, the telecom industry traditionally has been dominated by men. Um, what advice would you give for women who are looking to move forward in the communications industry? What's the secret of your success? <laughs> I think the secret is persistence, listening, and target orientation. But you can say this for a woman and a man. Yeah. yeah? So I think there's not a big difference. It's just that women should also believe that they can do it. They should also step into a um, Professions like me, I'm engineer. Yeah. yeah, 
um, where it's, it seems to be a ma male dominated. Huh? Yeah. But you can, you, you can make it. It yeah. all depends on the personality in terms of um, social skills, yeah. but also in terms of managing, yeah? being a manager and taking the people with you. And I, I think in this aspect, some of the women, may I say, uh, have a good feeling. So I feel I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm pretty well of getting my male colleagues motivated yeah. to go for one target and uh, to motivate them. Yeah, and obviously one of your reports is the great Axel Klauberg, who we have a terrific uh, partnership with. So we really, really enjoy working with Deutsche Telekom. It's a fantastic company. Uh, you're doing amazing things with technology. It's really a privilege to meet you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure.